Um, here is a guy, uh, Pete Hegseth, who was on the short list, apparently, of Donald Trump's to run the VA because of all his experience um, on uh, Fox and Friends. He's a veteran. And um, this is an interesting uh, perspective uh, to take on, on vets. Uh, I, I wonder if they will, um, uh, if they will uh, push this. Like maybe <laughs> they should do a special on Fox about how those vets, those greedy, greedy vets. The VA, under a $200 billion budget. Pause it. And I should say this is Howard Schultz at his uh, Fox um, town hall talking about uh, the VA. Our budget, and there are good people who are there, is probably a good example of a government organization that is quite bureaucratic and not meeting the needs of post 9-11 veterans. I will fix the VA. Well, that was Howard Schultz last night at the Fox Town Hall in Kansas City, Missouri. Meanwhile, most of the Democratic candidates are running on socialist ideas like Medicare for all. But would that, re that system really work in the United States? American veterans know the answer. Fox & Friends Weekend co-host, Army veteran uh, Pete Hegseth. Pete, you're all over this. This, yeah. would you, this is one of your passions. Mm -hmm. uh, you were heartened to hear that? <laughs> No, I mean, it was a good problem identification, right? But then if you say, we're going to fix it, well, there's a, the devil's in the details. Now, this president has gotten it mm -hmm. right from day one. He has said, give veterans choice, hold people accountable, make the system transparent. Uh, but, but the reality is this is still, there was a Wall Street Journal op-ed this week that started a lot of this discussion. You like socialism? Ask a veteran. The VA is veteran government run socialized medicine. And we've pumped billions into this system, millions, uh, and it hasn't made it better. Okay, so let's take a Pause look. Pause it for one second. Um, throughout the history of the VA, which is actually actual socialized medicine, mm -hmm. all the doctors, are, 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 are paid yeah. our, our government employees and not maybe not all but the vast majority and they have one of the most complicated tasks the VA as, as a whole is like almost like 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 a completely socialist country in some way in terms of the support that it provides for vets and really for the you know past couple of years there was a dip but the favorability ratings or the, um, you know, however you measure that, the satisfaction, the satisfaction yeah. levels were, were higher for the VA than any other system that mm -hmm. we have. Mm -hmm. And Pete Hegseth, he, he doesn't like uh, how, how dependent people are on it, I guess. It, uh, and it hasn't made it better. Okay, so let's take a look. By the numbers, how okay. big the VA is right now. Over close to 400,000 full-time employees, over 1,200 healthcare facilities, 9.8 million vets using it in 2017. It is the second largest department in federal government. And Pete, when you, you look at Pause it now, do you think they're going to come to the, re uh, the recognition like, maybe we shouldn't have so many wars? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that's, I'm looking at that number of vets, and I'm thinking, that's a lot. That's, that's a, a lot, lot of veterans. That's, why would yeah. we? Like concurrent forever so wars. so strange. Yeah, yeah, I'm guessing no. And Pete, when you, you look at 1,200 health care facilities, you know, one of the things that you have talked about and the president has talked about is he'd like to be able so that uh, somebody who's disabled or needs care doesn't have to go to a facility. They just go to their local guy. That's exactly right. Get the best care anywhere is the idea, and it doesn't have to be a VA facility. Uh, the number of VA employees has gone up by 100,000 in the last 10 years, 100,000 more employees. You've got an entire hospital network. Only 7 million of 21 million vets, actually, veterans in America, actually use the VA. Uh, and even with all that manpower increase and all that money increase, you're still waiting longer and longer at the hospital to actually be seen. So wait times have not improved? Wait times have not improved. This is what you get from government, more spending, because uh, it's a top-down perspective. Here's the hospital you use within this radius, and you get this doctor as opposed to empowering the individual to say, I've got a knee issue, <laughs> mm -hmm. Dr. Jones down the street could help me with it, and the dollars could follow me to get so that address. So people are still getting on lists to get of to, course. to see their, their doctors? Unfortunately. Look at this, veterans granted disability compensation. If you compare after World War II, 1.5 million veterans, 2017, 4.5 mm. million veterans. This is a really complicated mm. discussion. Mm. This is about uh, disability ratings, that, which isn't always necessarily tied to health care, but the idea that... You, 
this the healthcare you get is about service connected disabilities. So mm -hmm. if you're if you go to war and you get injured, we'll take care of you. So when you come home, they try to rate what how much how, how disabled you are, and that's how much care you get. Well, I could be rated for fifty percent right now if I wanted to be. I mean, just to have a totally and vets know this out there. I could do ear and ankle and knee and because back it's and proportional because right? it's proportional for different injuries that you have. Groups out there, vets groups mostly encourage vets to apply for every government benefit they can ever get after they leave the service. Because, well, why not, right? The government's giving yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. To me, the ethos of service is I serve my country because I love my country, and I'm going to come home and start the next chapter of my life. Mm -hmm. And if I've got a chronic condition, mental, physical, otherwise, the government better be there for me. But otherwise, I don't want to be dependent you if I don't integrity. have to you got Oh, yeah, all, wow. those, all, those, all those vets who now... One of the uh, reasons why that number could be higher is that um, we don't have as many people dead after um, mm -hmm. conflicts. We have more people injured. Mm -hmm. uh, and the I mean, there's there's a couple of things to unpack in there. But the VA handles unique injuries that are a function of war that you don't get in any, uh, you know, in just in civilian life. A and B, just this idea that somehow vets now are just getting like are, are too gr grubby. They're, they're, yeah, they're all they're coming home from the war and getting on the gravy train. They just well, can't wait to get those handouts when they're back from war. I mean, they could always bring back trench warfare. That might cut down on the numbers some. I don't understand why they don't more vets don't follow Pete Hegseth's um, uh, right. uh, uh, path and leverage other vets mm -hmm. to score points on Fox News. Mm -hmm. Right. That's really, I think. No, I the, think uh, they're not risking the imagination of a new possible. They're like welfare mercenaries. <laughs> they are. That's yeah. exactly what they they're are. They're only joining because they want health care. Get them out of there. Disloyal. Let's go to the phones. Call them from a.